Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Authentic Sounds. My name is Wim Winters and today I want to talk a little bit about tuning. This weekend uh, I was in the workshop of Jure Spotflieger. We had a meeting about an organ project and this week something happened to the instrument I, uh, for the first time. One string was broken. Not while playing, not while I was tuning. Uh, during the night, night it, uh, it definitely it, it, uh, must have decided that five years of uh, being attacked by my touch was enough. So this string, the, uh, the highest E, was broken. And since I had to uh, be in Tolumbeek in the workshop of Joris for this meeting, would take place. I uh, took my instrument with me. I can replace a string, but he can do it much better. But having replaced the instrument to there, I had to bring it back, of course, um, which influences the tuning. I must say, a clavichord is a very stable instrument, historically speak speaking also. Uh, we know from, from, uh, from sources, Mozart, Leopold Mozart, uh, writes to his son about that, for instance. But uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a rather stable instrument, but of course, uh, putting the instrument in your car, driving the whole way in a different uh, environment, other temperature, other humidity, bring it back and so on. So it influences the tuning. So I thought it might be interesting to share with you uh, some uh, practical uh, uh, things about tuning and maybe we can set up um, a small series of uh, vlogs about tuning because there, is, there are many, there are several aspects actually to, uh, that are important with tuning. Uh, first of all, you have of the technique of tuning, the instrument. And I mean with technique, of course, you have to know how it works. That's an evidence, of course. But the technique also implies that you tune an instrument in a way that it keeps tuning, that the tuning stays uh, uh, over a longer period uh, uh, stable. It's for a clavichord, it's for a piano, it's for a harpsichord, it's for all instruments. Uh, so that's that's one thing we have to... Uh, uh, um, we can talk about well, what's the technique of tuning. Second thing is, of course, making a nice temperament in, in the instrument. Uh, we will talk about historical temperaments. I must say it's not my core business. It's something you have to take, you have to do, you have to uh, devote your time to uh, in order to be able to tune your instrument. And it's, it's, it's ra rather important. Uh, and it's, I must say, it's rather fun to do also, but uh, I'm not uh, a, that kind of musician that goes very deep in historical tunings, uh, although I understand some, some aspects, of course, um, of it. Uh, um, historical tunings are important to understand, uh, but at the end you make, certainly at the keyboard instrument, your own tuning, depending on the literature you play and on, on your own taste. It's uh, all kind of small uh, differences that that, that, uh, that that can influence the tuning. So the temperament is another thing, and then when we talk a little bit about technique having set the temperament it's tuning the complete instrument it's something else it's all it's maybe a part of technique but can of course only be done after you have uh, put the temperament in the instrument so i think we will we will divide this into several vlogs and today we just start up with the technique and share with you some um, aspects that are really important when you tune the instrument. Uh, part two will be the uh, temperament and part three, maybe together with part two, I don't know, uh, tuning the complete instrument. So, one thing you have to understand when you tune, tune a keyboard instrument, a string instrument like this, is that the string 
whether it is a clavichord or harpsichord or a piano, piano uh, even an Irar piano, I can show you with my uh, my grand piano uh, it's the same thing that the uh, the strings has have a sounding part and has have a part that's not sounding and in the clavichord here you can see it very easily here's the bridge with these little pins where the string is uh, is going besides these little pins and makes a, a, an angle and this angle gives it's kind of that point that means that this is a sounding part this is not a sounding part it's influencing the uh, the tonality i mean not the, the 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 color of the of the instrument the toned color because these uh, uh, these strings so called the overlength is uh, sounding with the instrument and giving extra harmonics and extra uh, color adding color to the main part of the string so it's really important and you can hear that the instrument is uh, making music already when i'm to while while talking but it this little angle is a dead point what what that means that when you tune the instrument with the tuning pins and you change the position of a tuning pin it not necessarily means that this position is changed also it can very well be that here you build up a tension in this part of the string of course it influences tension of the sounding part which influences of course the, the pitch but the relationship between those two parts can be so that uh, the, 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 the differentiation of, 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 of tension that you have put in, in this section is larger, is bigger than this. So when you are not aware of this fact and you tune the instrument, you will see that when you start playing again, that after five minutes the instrument starts to be out of tune again. Why is that? Simply because certainly on the clavichord, but also, also on the piano, maybe less on the, on the harpsichord. When you uh, play the tangent, like, like we say in Dutch, it's probably the same in English, uh, or, or the hammer from piano, of course, makes contact with the string, gives pressure, and that pressure influences this point again so it it's it it is uh, it stretches this the string over that point so when you're not when you have tuned your instrument without being aware of this so-called well, it's a problem it's, it's something you have to be aware of then uh, the instrument will be out of tune very soon again so what are we going to do we are going to avoid that by giving a lot of pressure on the key. I will show you in a minute how I do that. On the clavichord you have the advantage of the fact that if you press uh, deeper, and I hope you can hear it, that okay, that the that the that the string is is of course um, um, uh, giving another another pitch, is increasing of pi and, and pitch. But the tension of the string becomes very high, so you can you can really give so much pressure that that the, that the string is coming over this that that point. When you tune a piano, you must be you must make sure that you hit the key very loud, fortissimo. If you don't, um, you, the same thing will happen with, with with the piano, certainly with an historical instrument. Even an Erard piano. My Erard piano is a very beautiful instrument built in 1866. It's a long time since I um, changed my piano and the organ for the clavichord. But anyway, I've tuned a lot of times this instrument. I've played the piano very intensively. So, in, to start the tuning, of course, that was the first remark. We have to be sure this instrument uses that's all unfettered clavichords, two um, strings per key and obviously you cannot tune uh, I have to look another thing here you cannot tune two strings at the same time so you have to uh, uh, make sure prevent one, one, one string of uh, two sound 
you can do that with with uh, little rubber things. Originally and historically, uh, it was a wooden. Uh, you can you can make a wooden part with with, with leather or whatever you want. Uh, some musicians, uh, like for instance my my colleague Miklos Spani, uh, he always uh, tunes tunes string per string. So he makes sure one interval is correct and the other one, uh, the two notes, notes he, he tuned um, are correct too, so that he can go uh, further. Uh, Miklos is really an, uh, an exceptional tuner, I must say. And that's the best way probably to do. <laughs> I have no patience to do that and I must say when I make a recording or have a concert that's really important. I uh, ask Joris to tune, and he is a very fine tuner too. But he, he uses this system; it's actually his system. It's it's a it's it's a matter of, of habit and and, and uh, uh, what 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 gives you the best feeling and the best uh, way of, of doing it. It's experience. So what I'm going to do now, what I've done now, is I have put this little felt. And I hope it's in this correct word. In between the, the strings, so I have um, uh, put out of function the the strings that are on the outside. So now I will tune only the inside strings. It sounds very different now because it's a monochord. Huh? It uses from this moment only one string per key. These sympathetic sounding strings, uh, you can leave it as it is. It's probably the best way to do. And again, Miklos uh, Spani, uh, I've talked a lot with him about tuning. He, he is he's leaving all that because, of course, it influences also the, a little bit the pitch. Maybe not the pitch, but it's certainly the color of the instrument. So yeah, it, it, it's 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 a uh, it's, it's a matter of taste. If you put leather on, it, it will sound much drier, as you can hear immediately, even now, well, while I'm talking. Um, my experience is that um, both systems are, are okay. This, this system works uh, fine and it's faster since you have less uh, elements to judge. You, so the sympathetic upper tones are for 80% gone from now on. So now we start with the first note and I like to start always with the F and since I have no absolute uh, hearing so I don't know exactly the pitch I'm using a simple uh, tuning set only for uh, for giving me the, the correct tone. I must say when I tune the piano, the Irar, um, to uh, to, uh, to put an equal temperament in it's much more difficult uh, so for the for the tuning of the of the piano, I will tune one octave with this in with this instrument, and the rest I will do on my ears. But for an instrument like this, these kind of uh, tuning sets have actually no. You you cannot you cannot tune very well with with this. And a harpsichord it's possible, but the length of tone of a clavichord is um, is not enough. Uh, the attack is too big in relationship to the length of the tone. This instrument is not sensitive enough to uh, of this this device is not sensitive enough to uh, to give you the correct pitch and by the besides it, it, there are so many upper tones in the instrument that can influence the the, the, the pitch um, there are more expensive devices than this uh, will make your life easier I mean you can use them with the clavichord. This one is useless, only for giving the pitch. So I will try to hit the right keys. So that's the F. And if I listen, that's a little bit too low. What I mean, what I will do now is, and then we come to the to the another important thing is how I will change the pitch of the instrument of this string. As you can hear it's very little. So the instrument went a little bit down which is very normal. Um, it can happen that the instrument goes up in, in pitch uh, due to temperature and humidity but in norm normal 
the tension of the string. Um, the result of that is that the instrument, that the tension is, is, is coming down and so, of the string and apparently also the pitch. Um, that's one thing you have to remember if you give a concert and or you have to play or you have to tune the instrument and you have to tune the instrument down that can be very problematic because in string that is being tuned in a, at a lower pitch has a tendency to go even lower even when you tuned it very well so when you have to retune an instrument it can be that you play with a traverso or with another instrument uh, and it's the same for all all string stringed instruments that if you have to play with another instrument that's that's tuned lower if you know that your instrument has to be tuned lower of a lower pitch you have to make sure that you do it several days before and retune the instrument after a couple of days it's okay so for a clavichord there is one um, actually the the, the 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 size of the instrument gives the pitch and for this instrument, the, uh, the A sounds about 408, 408 hertz, which is, uh, of course, an, a pitch that is not very often used with other instruments. I can retune this instrument to uh, 392 or even go up to 415 or 420. I must say going up for 415 makes the instrument sound very, very, um, Iron like it's not not very uh, it's not very flattering for the sound of the clavichord, but it's possible. Going lower is no problem. It loses a little bit of the strength. Uh, at, at, at 400 or 390, um, I wouldn't play a Beethoven sonata on it. It has not the uh, the resistance anymore. But you can do it if you play with traverso, no problem. So um, having said all that. Uh, if you have, if you're retuning instrument like I have to, go, to do now and you just go a little bit up, it's very important, important to not touch the string more than it's necessary. So I don't know if you, if you uh, know what I mean. I mean, if I will, I will say it again because it's, in, in, it's important. If I would retune this F, which is only slightly too low. Too high, so if I influence the, the pitch too much, I have to go back. And going down, you know, uh, we know it's, it's not good for your tuning. It's not dramatic if it happens one of two strings, but you, you better avoid it. Then another thing is, uh, Especially with the clavichord, you can have two techniques of tuning. So I take the F, here it is. I can turn with this tuning. I even don't know how you call this. It's not a tuning. Uh, uh. Yeah, you know, you see what I mean. So you can turn it, but by turning, you increase this tension very much more than that. So turning, uh, you do, you can turn, but when you only turn your tuning device, then you must be sure that you give a lot of pressure on, on the key, because if you don't, you only give more, more tension on this, and then, then, then the tuning will be very unstable. What you can do with the clavichord is, these long tuning pins are very thin, so they have a certain flexibility. You can give pressure on it, uh, and giving pressure is is another way of tuning. It, of course, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't harm the instrument, but it makes sure that you only touch the instrument very slightly. So if I go to a little bit higher, So I was even a little bit too high. A little bit too high is no problem. A little bit too high means that you just take the string over its top and let it go back. For a piano, you have to do it like that because you don't have this possibility that I do now just by stretching this. Uh, so you go back then. And then the string falls a little bit lower and it's okay. So if now you have tuned the F 
as a starting point. So by stretching, if you uh, go lower in the bass, and we'll see that when we when we tune the complete instrument, then um, it works both ways. Going down in the, in the bass part is it's, it's the easier thing, but it's mm, uh, no, it's not easy, but it's it's different. Going more to the top, you will see that you have uh, have other possibilities. Important to remember is I have put pressure. It's actually the only thing we have tuned in this video now, but it's important to know. Yeah, I, I gave pressure to this. If you see, if you um, and by by putting in the temperature and like next block, we will we will we will see that. And certainly by retuning the complete instrument. But if you um, notice that you have that that it doesn't change too much, or that you haven't got the margins to go that high that you want, then you have to turn. And when you turn, you have while turning, give pressure, even even more pressure than you should on the clavichord. So you go over the tone. By doing so, you stretches the string, and it it gives the string a kind of neutrality. Um, it uh, it has a memory string, it's kind of memory from the position where it was, it wants to go back. If you stretch this string very much, or at the piano for to play it very loud, it, it, it wipes out this memory. So you can start all over again, it gives more room, and then you will see you can turn a little bit, so make the tension a little bit higher, and then use the same technique. So turning and stretching is a possibility. So, um, I think for today, we have touched several important uh, issues. Uh, next time um, we will go deeper and further in on uh, the tuning of, uh, of the temperament. And just to make a, sh a short recapitulation, uh, be sure that uh, your instrument is at the right pitch. If, if you go, have to go lower and you know it, really take your time for that. Don't tune your instrument much lower before a concert. It can be really, it's really uh, uh, not a good idea. Go up a little bit if you have to make a decision. And uh, whatever you do, try to touch as little as possible on the string. So, um, yeah, a lot of things can be said uh, about this, but I think for today, um, that was it. Next time we will talk about the temperament next vlog. So thank you for watching and listening. And uh, if you like the videos, of course, uh, don't forget to hit, this, hit the subscribe button. Okay, see you next time. Bye.